it's time to talk about this Tesla refresh that happened a whole week ago. Okay. I think it's talk. I think I think it's time. I think we've gathered our thoughts the past week. We've thought critically of some knee jerk reactions we might have had upon first reveal. And uh probably have more level headed opinions a week later. So what is your opinion of the Tesla refresh? Uh it's right. It's just I think a- people were expecting more in terms of appearance from the outside Mm -hmm. and somehow they were expecting less in the interior side so a very nice middle a very unbalanced refresh uh but that that, that's all you had to say about the front i i i definitely remember some stronger words about the front front. you don't like the front i don't like the front you you said like the front you just said it i don't like the front you don't like the front i don't i don't like it i don't like it you don't like the chin i don't like it no they changed like two things for, on the outside attention. and you that's the most prominent change in 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 the exterior of the car and you're like nah i'm not with it for the old one 100 percent, 100 percent. uh yeah it's definitely a small change and I'd, but the inside makes up for a but lot of yeah yeah the if <laughs> if if they kept the same interior and the only thing they changed was the 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 headlight taillights being moved to LEDs and that chin. I'd I'd be I'd be a little bit upset and I would very hesitate to be calling this a refresh. But the interior definitely more than made up for whatever changes they did on the outside. Uh because there was a lot. Is it enough? Is it enough of an outside change for you? Because you were very strong on wanting an external refresh. Is the chin enough? No. Does the interior make up? The interior makes up for it. If okay, if, if if like I said, if it was the same interior, or maybe slightly updated interior, and they just changed the front, I would I'd be a bit like, really, that's it, because it's not that big of a change in in in, in the front. If, if we're if we're being honest, but at least it's something. But the interior, you're okay with this. You're okay with this external appearance for the next five years. Um. No, no, you know me. Uh, about a year and a <laughs> half from now, I'm going to be like looking at my imaginary watch and being like, eh, "It might be time for another, <laughs> it might be time for another refresh." You, 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 you can you can bank on that article in a, in a year. You, you, you put it put it down on the calendar. It's going to come. But the interior took me by surprise as I was scrolling through the pictures in the earnings report slide show PDF thing. At first, I just saw the exterior, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's a refresh. But then I scrolled to the next picture, and it was the completely redesigned interior. And I was like, whoa, whoa, this is a lot of change. So I guess we'll go component by component here. Uh, very prominent change is the steering wheel. Has no top. How do you feel about this yoke steering wheel? Not team yoke. Not team yoke. Hate it. Hate it. There's no way it's going to drive comfortably. You're not a speed racer fan. It's not a track car. I mean, it can be a track car, but it's still a luxury sedan. The majority of people are going to use it as a daily driver, not going to tow it to a track. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I, I feel like maybe the, the thought process is when you want a really engaged drive for the sake of fun driving, you'll have this more aggressive wheel ready for, you know, two-handed steering wheel. And then all the other times you'll just be on autopilot. And you won't really be touching the steering wheel that often. Yeah, but I like to drive. Yeah. I don't use autopilot as frequent as I should mm-hmm. or as other people do. Mm-hmm. I mean, Robo taxi is a different story, but we're not there yet. Mm-hmm. And even when we're there, I'm going to want to drive every once in a while. Mm-hmm. And for city driving, <laughs> yeah, it's a regular steering wheel is better. On a track, yeah, I'll give you that. But for city driving, for people who like driving... A regular steering wheel is gonna be better. You're just you're just mad you can't lean back with it. You can't. I, I can't. You, you can't rest your hand on top of the steering wheel. It's a very. How, how am I supposed to pass a driving test? I can't go ten and two. You can't go. What What are you gonna do if you bring an, a Model S to your uh, driver's license test? <laughs> All you got is nine and three. 
I don't know if that's good enough. Uh, but it's definitely a controversial uh, change, and I'm really surprised they put it in. I mean, we've seen it on the Roadster, but, I mean, the Roadster's a sports car. It kind of – if if any car was to make sense with this steering wheel, it would be that thing. It was also in the Cybertruck, And in the Cybertruck, right? yeah. Um, but, you know, the Cybertruck's still in kind of – at least the interior, I, I don't consider in, like, a production – official yeah, states so if if this is going into production i think it's safe to assume yeah. that the cyber yeah. truck will have a yoke steering as well yeah. with that being said you know our only experience was in a roadster and a concept cyber truck that we don't know what is fully production ready or not so for them to actually put it in this car is pretty surprising and i i don't know the legalities of a steering wheel but i'm surprised that it's legal to not have a whole portion of the steering wheel um with that being said do you think there's going to be an option for a regular steering wheel uh i think that people are going to bully tesla into offering it i don't think there's plans to but i think that there will be an option i think enough people will request it and it'll come yeah yeah because it's a cool thing but I I think that uh, it's not the best option for casual driving. Um, along with the steering wheel, a lot of oh. a lot of tech inside the steering wheel. All of the headlights, the yeah. high beams, and everything are now inside the steering wheel itself. Yes, there is no stock. Like, they're not like buttons. Or, are they touchscreen? Yeah. Are they uh, pressure sensitive? Yeah, unsure, but they're um, flat. So a lot to be seen there. Yeah, not. Not a first. Ferrari has been doing that with their cars for years now. Well, Ferrari's physical right. buttons. Yeah, it's buttons. But the, the, the fact that they don't have stocks and they map all of the stock yeah. buttons onto the steering wheel. Of course, the thinking there being that you're driving a performance car. You want your hands on the hands on the steering wheel at all times. Um, but they are buttons there, not not touchscreens. Although I think on the very newest, newest Ferrari, some of them have turned into touchscreens on the steering wheel. But regardless... No stocks. And uh, that means no gear shifter. Nope. Which. Uh, AI, uh, baby. Which uh, made me rant um, <laughs> with with strong words uh, that I'm not going to repeat. But I'm in the camp that changing gears is such a simple process that I don't understand why you would have to overcomplicate it with an AI and I just don't have 100% confidence that an AI will know if I want to be in which gear, you know, I, the the example was given that if I'm pulling up to my driveway, I'll be in drive. I'll stop in front of my garage door wall, whatever. And the Tesla will see that there's a wall and put myself in park. But what if in that situation I'm doing a three point turn or perhaps I forgot I needed to do something else and I really wanted to be in reverse. Do I then have to wait for this car to realize that park is the incorrect gear? It actually needs to be in reverse. What what, what goes down in these situations? There is an override buttons or on the touchscreen, wherever they're located, that you can use. But if I'm going to be reliant on using those buttons, I don't really understand why we have to use an AI for switching gears. Well, I mean, it's not the first thing like this. If you look at stuff like one pedal driving, regenerative braking, who would have argued that pressing the brake, pressing the brake pedal was difficult? That was also a useless upgrade, you would have thought. But it's become a convenience because that slight second of time saved every time you press the brake is, is pretty nice, actually. <clears throat> I think this is going to be the same. I think it's people going to get used to it. Uh, we're seeing a lot of tech go into cars that are fixing these very minor inconveniences, but are somehow something that you you don't think about, but then you use it, and then five years from now, you say, I could never go back. And I think this might be one of those things. Admittedly, I haven't seen it in action, so it could have worked flawlessly. And I'm yelling at a worst-case scenario. And even if it doesn't work flawlessly, if it works just half the time, you're still saving time. I don't know, man. It takes like a second as long as to they don't change hide gears. The... 
you telling me that I'm saving like half a second on changing gears. Well, would you have been mad if they didn't implement AI and they just put the gear shift in the screen instead? I don't understand. It would be the exact same thing. I, I'll i be fine if the AI is a toggable, if, if I can turn it off and on. If, 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 if I, if they force me to use touchscreen gear shifters, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it if they allow me to turn off the AI if I find it not good enough for my needs. I will agree there. I hope that there is a toggle because Tesla does have a lot of instances of implementing tech that's still in beta and too early and not ready for prime time. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to assume that this is not ready for prime time. <laughs> One day it will be, but I don't think out the gate this is going to be a perfect system. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully there's like some foot gestures, you know, maybe double tap the the brake to go into reverse. We already kind of have foot gestures with autopilot to to disable autopilot. You tap the brake. mm -hmm. We have brake hold, which is really nice. We'll see. We're we're obviously speculating a lot about how this is going to function. And we have to wait to see how it actually functions. Um, Speaking of the screen, they listened to you, Gio. They, 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 just they, me they put just what you wanted i was the only person <laughs> <laughs> i requested this and they granted my wish <laughs> they did not put a model y or three styled screen that protrudes from the dashboard it is integrated into the dashboard and comes with tilt how much tilt they don't say i can't imagine there's much tilt since it's in the dashboard but Nope. I think any tilt is better than no tilt. I mean, the the screen right now in in the old Model S tilts slightly towards the driver. Yeah. And you don't even notice it as a driver, but as a passenger trying to use the screen, you notice it a lot. Yeah. Uh, the screen is bigger than what's found in the three and the Y. It's Seventeen inches instead of fifteen inches, and uh, Elon making me look foolish by uh, presenting it as a functional gaming center console whatever you want to call it I, I called that i brought that into fruition oh uh, yeah they also li- they, they just listened to you for the entire center console apparently. <laughs> so the promotional pictures for the model s have the witcher 3 in the uh center console and elon said that it could also run cyberpunk 2077 both pretty full-fledged graphics intensive uh games and said that the chip in the uh, MCU is equivalent to the current gen PS5 and Xbox Series One. So uh, it it does seem like this is MCU three, a whole new system. It doesn't seem like this UI or updates are going to be sent to current cars or three and Ys. Uh, it seems the Model S and X will stand we'll, alone. We'll see if I'm I'm obviously interested to see how seriously they'll take putting games into the the tesla is going to be because i mean you can say that it runs whatever games you want but if you don't have any way to distribute these games it's not going to work i mean historically everyone's gotten the same games for free through software updates but i'm really doubtful that you know software update whatever 2021 point 20 point whatever is just going to have witcher 3 for free i mean it might I mean, if you look at it from a reverse perspective, the company behind Witcher 3 could offer Tesla, hey, please put our game in your car under the hope that people are going to realize, hey, I like this game, but like I don't want to play it in my car. I'm going to buy it for my PS5. I suppose. I don't even... Th- I'm, I'm wondering if they can even play the full games, not from like a graphics well, standpoint. We can, but we can if- add external hard drives. We already can for Sentry Mode. Mm. So I'm going to assume it's the same thing. Just plug in an external hard drive and have games on there. Yeah, because, I mean, between Cyberpunk and Witcher, you're taking up over 100 gigs of space. I don't I don't think the Model S and X are shipping with terabyte SSDs. In, I doubt it. So I doubt it. But we already have external drives for Sentry Mode. And now, at least with the 3 and Y, I'm going to assume as well with the refresh S and X, but we haven't seen them in person, the USB is in the glove box. You can easily stick an external drive in there. Well, it won't be in the way. Once again, we'll we'll have to wait and see how that transpires. If a Tesla App Store is in our future, or perhaps a lot a, of this 
refresh is very unique in in terms of auto refreshes Mm -hmm. because it focuses mostly on tech yeah yeah we got bigger screens more screens gaming computer uh we've got the new air conditioning in the three and y Mm -hmm. tri-zone climate Mm -hmm. and an active noise cancellation that's crazy yeah don't forget the the screen in the back oh yeah screen in the back which is cute but i mean useless if you think critically about it not the comfiest of spots for a screen and it being only eight inches i mean i think i think they could have shipped it without the screen in the back and no one would have been really that mad yeah, but it looks cool. I mean, look at all the new EVs. Rivian has a screen there. Lucid has a screen there. You got Byton with their giant screen. Screens are the future. We just need infinite screens. Yeah, just but... Just make the whole car one screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I know that you agree with me that the positioning of that is not the most comfortable to... to yeah, no, it's horrible. It's never going to be used. I mean, as, as, like, as a controller, sure. Like, to, to, to adjust volume, to uh, air conditioning, sure, I'll give you that. But But they're presenting it as a possible gaming system as well as an entertainment feature at least in their images yeah and i don't know why anyone would play a game on an eight inch screen versus their phone especially at that angle yeah um but the back seats do look a bit more comfy and so at the very least backseat passengers did also get an improvement in, in in the back even if they find the rear screen useless uh question is where are the Air conditioned vents for the back passengers. Don't know. Your, because your, the screens were the old vents were. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, but they got to be there because it has tri zone. Where's the tri in the tri zone? You would hope that the back seats <laughs> are the third zone. Ah <laughs> uh, man, but it's Tesla, so I can't. I, I can't. Nothing. Nothing's ever for sure with this company. The doors were changed. The but doors it's were just, changed. The Model 3 and Y doors, right? Yes. So if you hate buttons, if you hate to press a button to open a door, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to press a button to open your door. No, the latch is no longer here. <laughs> they added the uh, cabin-facing camera, but we knew that was going to happen. Uh, the Wireless chargers in the front and the back. Yes, so all the phone charger accessory people are big mad. Uh, like you said, 22 speakers with noise cancellation. Too many speakers. Noise uh, cancellation is going to be interesting because every other company relies on canceling the noise through quality and yeah, seals. And Tesla's like just like, and Tesla's just like, well, we suck at quality, so let's just add some tech to it. And it's going to be interesting to see whether it works or not. This man had I mean, things like things like AirPods are great, but I don't know. It's going to work inside of a car. This dude really just. We'll have to wait and see. Quality like that. He had an opportunity to not say that, but he really did say that. Um, I I hope the double paned uh, windows they put in the updated Model Three are at least in this, because that definitely helps with sound deadening. I hope they're not entirely relying on just (laughs) technology. Uh, What else changed? The wood grain changed. So I Mm -hmm. I'm not the biggest fan of wood. uh, no more beige ceiling, or it's just all black now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Alcantara stayed, just all black ceilings now. Yes. Um, air conditioned seats. What are they called? Ventilated seats. Ven- ventilated what they're called? seats. Yeah. So your butt can be cool. Uh, paint colors are the same. Nothing changed there. They have nope. d- different premium wheels. Yes. They have the arachnids. The standard wheels are still not good. The range went up just a bit. The range went up from 409 to 412. 409, yeah, to 412. Uh, The price went up. The price went up. Uh, The meme meme 69420 price is no longer. Is it worth the 10 grand? Well, you're basically paying 10 grand for the computer. Because it's basically the same car. In terms of specs, performance and range, it's the same thing. The only difference you're getting is is an updated interior, but, you know, it's still an interior. There's nothing changed there. So you're really just paying for the 
for the computer, the steering wheel, and the, the, the active noise cancellation and speakers, I guess. I mean, they did they did say they updated the motors and the battery pack itself. It's just the, the oh, yeah, performance. It has, is, and it's, it's three motors now. All of them. No, not right? the long range. The long range oh, you're right, stays you're right, at you're right, you're right. Uh, you're right. But they did this weird naming change where the old performance is now called the Plaid. And the Plaid that we knew of is called the Plaid Plus. Which... I think the Plaid now just implies that it has three motors. Yes. yes. And the Plus is just more range. And we've seen Pluses before. We had the, the, yeah. the P95D Plus. It was just more range. Yeah, but it was just... It, it's just a little bit weird because everyone's waiting for the Plaid. But then they made the Plaid not the Plaid. They made that Plaid the Plaid Plus. It's, it's just well it's still the same specs it's just the range so they're actually able to offer they're actually offering the same range the same specs performance specs that they promise at a lower price point for those who don't need the 520 miles of range bro no 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 no, no, no. the regular plaid is 1.99 seconds 0 to 60 plaid plus is less than 1.99 <laughs> seconds 0 to 60 don't don't get it twisted I, we we got to talk a little bit about those performance numbers because there's a lot of asterisks involved that people are conveniently <laughs> skimming over. <laughs> well, that yeah. 1.99 seconds says that it's not including the the rolling start. No, and that's for the, the quarter mile. Range of, oh, for the quarter mile. Yeah. And then the range says that it's on... No, was it? Yeah. One of them say that... It, for the No, I think it was the quarter mile also that said that... Uh, is only achievable on the proper uh, yes. wheels, yeah. If you, yeah. which aren't available until fall. So if you buy the Plaid Plus or the Plaid today, you will not achieve those specs stated today because you have to buy a whole new set of wheels in fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. To, to achieve any of these performance numbers, you need to get better tires because... Uh, and then subtract the number that never gets subtracted elsewhere. <laughs> I, I don't... I. <laughs> Are, are there because I remember when the Bugatti came out, Michelin had to literally make new tires for the, the, the Bugatti. And with Tesla claiming the Plaid S is going to be the fastest production car ever in terms of zero to 60, is, is the, does, does the correct tire even exist? Are you going to have to buy special tires for your Plaid Plus? And I'm just going to assume that Tesla has a few contracts lined up with some tire companies because we did see custom tires on the Cybertruck as well. I hope they, I hope they, you know, include those tires, <laughs> at least for the Plaid Plus. Like, I hope I when they have to, if they're, if they're showing those specs, right? I, I, I don't know the legalities. I, I would hope so. I would hope Tesla's like, oh yeah, by the way, if you want that, you got to pay like I don't know another two three grand in the proper tires. You gotta buy our uh, track package like we did for the Model Three performance. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's a refresh. It, exterior wise, not much. Interior wise, a lot of much. The ultimate question is. Will it be worth the price? I mean, Tesla increased the production capacity for the Model S and X in the Fremont factory by 10,000. So from 90,000 to 100,000 a year. So I imagine they they are thinking that this will improve their struggling sales at least a little bit. Will enough people, will enough people like this car? Just gonna have to wait and see. Do you think it's worth $10,000 extra? Uh, I feel like it's a, that's another topic that we'll get into. 